Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today we are going to continue on the Spring AI series, uh, working with Java 23, Spring Boot, and Spring AI. And if you haven't seen the previous two episodes, you should really go and watch them. Otherwise, this one I won't make much sense because I'm typically building on top of what we did in previous ones. Okay. And as always, the links uh, are in the description section. So if you want to kind of follow along, uh, perhaps build it from the scratch yourself or take a look at my code or the documentations. They are all there, so feel free. I I'm delighted if you build something based on my videos, inspired by them. Let me know, by the way. I love when I get some comments feedback in the comment section. But uh, we have some things to cover, so let's get started. We'll dive into my application and code. So. I modified uh, my application slightly after episode two. So right now we have an index page because I'm starting to add more demonstrations and my stuff from episodes one and two is here. So we created a excuse bot. If I give a, a problem, it's going to come up with an excuse using large language models, in this case, open AI model. And uh, then when I get back here, uh, I have now copy pasted this little bit of code to a chat and uh, we can chat with it. It's a simple chat, but anything I say will be passed for the LL LLM model. And then uh, we get a nice response back. So if I say uh, I am Donald Duck, we get a nice response. But if I say who am I? So here is the problem, because uh, by default, uh, when we are prompting or chatting, there is no context. So anything you do is like one shot, and then uh, it's not going to forget the conversation. So we just do request response, and that's it. So today we are going to fix th this one, because that kind of chat would be a little bit boring. We'll make it slightly better today. And one way to fix this would be to kind of just store all the stuff in the client side and just send it, uh, send it all together as part of the request all the time. However, uh, that gets a bit messy and unstructured rather fast, so there is a better and easier way, fortunately. Um, if we take a look at the Spring AI documentation, link in the description section, under the chat client API, the key here is advisors. So there is different kinds of advisors and open-ended API for figuring out your own. But for the chat memory, it's a common need and uh, we have already some implementations chat that are really nice. So we have the message chat memory advisor and we can combine that with uh, in-memory chat memory to get very easy access to having some context that remains. Not going to go there today in this video, but worth mentioning, there is also like Cassandra chat memory that you could easily do to do semi-persistent chat memory. And you could even do fully persistent chat memory and combine this with user sessions to have something that is stored in database or file, for example. But today we keep it simple, so we just do in memory. Let's dive a little bit onwards and all the code we need is here. So we would need to modify slightly what we did last time. Um, we are still going to inject chat client builder, but now uh, when we build the chat client, we would uh, add this uh, advisor. So we would add a message chat memory advisor and use the in-memory chat memory. And that's it. So that is all the code changes we actually need. And uh, I think let's go and apply all that. And uh, worth mentioning, this is an awesome example to go a bit deeper, but since we are going to dive into these in upcoming episodes, I'm not going to go too, too heavily on these today. We will dive, um, should, you, should you want it. By the way, drop some feedback in my comment section if you are interested, because that will always encourage me to do upcoming videos. But there is some system level prompting and some rag going on and some uh, kind of logging going on, and function calling even, so all, all fun stuff. I'll happily make more videos if you're interested. But today, let's make it, make it minimal and let's make it simple. So into the code, I will dive. So the 
example that I just showed to you is a chat that forgets I have HTML page that calls it and I have the implementation here. And since we are now going to make it a chat that doesn't forget, um, I'm going to name it simple with chat. So I'm going to make a few modifications to my backend, like so, and also to the front end so that everything matches nicely. Okay. And then uh, we'll modify the approach a little bit here. So the problem right now is that we are grabbing the chat client builder and every time somebody makes a call, we are building a new chat client. So definitely there is nothing that remains across different invocations. So this is the part that we need uh, instead of uh, injecting a chat client builder like we did. Well, we are still going to inject it, but I'm just going to store something different based on the uh, documentation. So we are going to store the chat client itself. And it means that instead of uh, kind of storing the chat client builder, we are just going to do it like so. So I'm removing this little bit here. And uh, instead, instead of storing the chat client builder, I'm going to build a chat client and store the chat client here. And then we just reuse that all over. Now, uh, before we build it, we need that one little bit, so we inject the chat memory, like so. Here we go. So we'll do default advisors, and we inject the chat memory here. And I need one more phrase here. And uh, for the chat memory implementation, we can just use new in memory chat memory like so. So that's the simplest way to do it. As mentioned, you can configure something more fancy and, and like Cassandra or create your own implementation. And you could also figure out where you store it and whether it's user specific or not. In this case, it's not. So we because we are putting it here, it's not user specific. So all the users would be sharing it. Not really good session, but it's a good start. And uh, since I'm a little bit superstitious, I'm going to restart my server. Um, I'm using live reload. So technically it kind of tries to react to my changes and uh, reload things, but it, it messes up sometimes. So I'm just making sure we get a nice and clean start with the hopefully stateful chat memory. So final step, let's try it. Uh, let's see if I managed to do it all or if I blundered somewhere. So we have a chatbot. Say something. I am Donald Duck. Hello, Donald Duck. Great to have you here. How can I assist you today? Who am I? You are Donald Duck. So as you can see, we modified uh, this to be stateful. But as I mentioned, it's not stateful or user session to do to to do that we have a few options we could use spring uh, old old fashioned spring server kind of stateful sessions rather easily and we could store the chat client or at least the memory implementation there sure we could do that another way would be to kind of uh, build a service that accepts some kind of user identity as parameter so if you use um, JSON web tokens or some other kind of uh, authentication mechanism, that would do it. I leave that for you to kind of explore, not going to be in today's video. However, uh, if you get curious and want, want to see me build that, we could definitely do that. But I have other good stuff to follow up. So if you have followed up so far, now is the time to click the like button if you, if you like the videos because that encourages me to build more. I have plenty of ideas for more episodes to cover because there is so much more for the for the LLMs and how to combine that with Java and how to use the Spring AI. It's a treasure trove of functionality and we have only scratched the surface in part three of the series. But I hope you are finding value out of this. I hope you are entertained and perhaps even inspired to build something or learning new stuff. This is pretty basic. We cannot deep dive uh, if we are spending less than an hour. But it might be fun to do a deep dive or a bit heavyweight video later as well. Let me know if you want something like that. 
But we have managed to do some things I didn't do in the previous part. So we have managed to take a look into specific parts of the Spring AI, combine that with user interface and uh, kind of keep the momentum. I'm trying to keep shortish videos right now because <laughs> The end of the year is uh, closing by and I'm pretty sure when December comes I don't have so much time um, time to do these videos so I try to crack uh, as much as I can before the upcoming um, advent of code for example and uh, and uh, all the Christmas craziness okay I hope you enjoy the videos let me know how you do how you enjoy these and if you want something more specifically and have a good time see you in the next one hopefully bye bye